what's going on here? We need some information. Let's get the 411 from Republican Congressman, Congresswoman Michelle Bach from Minnesota. Representatives, Representative, it seems like these votes are being purchased. People visit the White House the next day. Their brothers are offering judgeships. They visit, they take a ride on the plane, they're, they're changing their votes. Are these being bought? Well, yeah, obviously that's what they do here. Speaker Pelosi hasn't showed us any language from the bill. That's because it's being written behind closed doors. It depends on how what deal she was able to construct. She's using a combination of sweeteners and sticks. If she can't get what she wants with sweeteners buying it, they're using sticks and swatting people into line. It's a really ugly process. And unfortunately, in some cases, like with Dennis Kucinich, Mr. Matheson, it's working. Uh, Congresswoman, I know you attended the Kill the Bill rally yesterday, you know, still trying to get people riled up. I'm really surprised I haven't seen more protests. More, You know, I, I hear anecdotal evidence that, you know, phone lines of lawmakers are tied up. But, you know, we want to see, like we saw during the town halls, where people are upset. I mean, and I got to point out this Wall Street Journal NBC poll that was just out yesterday. Forty-six percent of the people polled say pass the Obama plan. Forty-five percent say keep the current system. Nine percent not sure. I think you need to do a lot more work to get people riled up against this plan. Rebecca, the people are wild, riled up, and they're wild. They don't want this bill. The I'm CNN poll. It. That well, oh, it's here. Yesterday, the phone lines were shut down here in Congress. Over 500 rallies have been held across the country just in the last week. We had 4,000 people alone in Minnesota. People are not just coming to, here to D.C. for a big rally. They're actually working in their districts. They're holding rallies in front of Democrat members of Congress district offices, and they're swamping their phone lines back home, too. They're making calls. They're doing Thing they can to be heard. The, my phone is ringing off the hook here in Washington, D.C., as it is with other members of Congress. So the people are just as wound up as, as they w ever were in August. It's just not being reported in the media, I think. But it, it is happening. I'm here on Capitol Hill, and it's happening. Representative, try and quantify that a little bit. You, you know, Rebecca cites a poll that sounds about split. And, you know, we back save during the TARP bailouts, it was we would have representatives come on and say it was 90 to 90 to 10, 9 to 1. They, they would have calls against the bailouts. Of course, you guys pass that stuff anyway. Does it even matter? What's, what, is the, what is the outrage like? Give us a, quantify that for us and tell us whether it even matters. Well, I voted, ag I voted against the bailout, and my calls were 90 to 1 against. It's the same thing now with this, with this job-killing government takeover of health care. It's also an overwhelming number of people that are calling against the bill. There was an organized effort about three days ago of people who are calling in favor of the bill, but now it's almost universal, the calls that are coming in. People are desperate. They're against it. I held a teletown hall this afternoon with tens of thousands of people in my district, all saying, vote no on this bill, and what can we do to get the other people to vote no? Because now one thing that we know is that there will be federal funding of abortion in the bill. That's a, that's a fact. It's going to happen. And that is that should be changing a lot of the minds of the pro-life Democrats to vote <laughs> against the bill. Congresswoman, what, tell us, give us a sense of what's going to happen if, in fact, they invoke the deem, the slaughter rule, you know, they circumvent an actual floor vote by deeming the Senate bill passed. What will you do specifically to stop something like that from going through? Well, if that happens, the bill will be presented to the president and he'll sign it. At that point, we'll have an unconstitutional bill that will be then passed. You will see scores of people file lawsuits and they will ultimately succeed. You can't flagrantly violate Article 1, Section 7, Clause 2 of the Constitution, which demands that my name be written down in the right. journal with my vote next to it. Nancy Pelosi can't presume my vote. She can't deem that I voted on a bill that I never right. voted on. She can't do that. So, she, so this will be found unconstitutional. Right. That, that's a great setup here because you've said in the past that this is illegal, illegitimate, and now you're saying unconstitutional. Um, but, but on what grounds? Because this uh, slaughter rule or the no vote vote, basically, the Republicans used it in 2005 to increase the debt limit. 
It was taken to court m m mainly based on technicalities of how it was written, because both chambers didn't have the same debt uh, numbers in there, and the courts ruled that it was constitutional. But so, on what grounds is this, this, this the voting procedure, not the actual health care? Is it constitutional? If it's unconstitutional, if it's been used so many times before, including by your party? It hasn't been used so many times before. There's reconciliation in the Senate. This is the, the, the new slaughter rule here in the House. Well, then 2005 no, no, it was no, used, is what Rebecca, I'm referring to specifically. Re Rebecca, never before has a rule like this been used to have government take over one okay, sixth so of the, the economy. Okay, so that's the you're talking about. That, that's no, what I'm getting at, what you were getting no, at Rebecca, exactly. Rebecca, there's more, there's more than that, and legal, legal scholars who are far more learned in this area than I am, they'll okay. elucidate the reasonings, the re legal reasonings, but I, I am fully confident that this will be found unconstitutional if Speaker P Pelosi utilizes this thermonuclear option, and the American people will be so riled. The Speaker will undoubtedly lose her gavel in November. But what's worse, the American people will see immediate right. tax increases and will see tremendous job well, loss. Hopefully you can uh, prevent it from actually going that far, because I know that's what you hope to do. So, <laughs> uh, you, Representative Michelle Bachman, thank you very much for joining us for Happy Hour. We'll leave it there. Happy St. Patrick's Day, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Life.